I'd like to welcome you to one of the most censored, interrupted live streams on the internet. You know, the sun is our companion. The sun works along with our melanin. I'm out here this morning absorbing sun rays into my melanin, absorbing sun rays into my pineal gland by way of my eyes. You see, if you have a fully functional pineal gland, you can actually stare at the sun for brief moments and it won't damage your retina because it's a different type of light. So I'm out here this morning letting my melanin absorb that which was meant to energize it, that which was meant to cause it to synthesize the vitamins that make us healthy. They want you to stay in the house. They don't want you to get no sun. They don't want you to wake up your melanin because if you do, you might find out that we're in the middle of a spiritual awakening right now. The energies that are floating through the atmosphere have a different effect on you if you have melanin, which I know a lot of you all not familiar with so i'm out here this morning soaking up my melanin if y'all want to see what i'm seeing this is what it looks like when you absorb your melanin in the sky I'm trying to get my screen to flip around i don't want to act right i guess i got too much going on mm, that's a nice one for graham y'all don't want me to show the people the sun that's interesting mm, oh well I guess I just have to keep all this sunshine to myself. I'm on my morning mental. And if I had to put a, a title, it would be very simply Sticks and Stones. Yeah, Sticks and Stones, as the words of the great Dave Chappelle. Sticks and Stones this morning. Because apparently some of us have forgotten that when we were a child, there was an old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Somewhere along the line, we forgot that people. We began to buy into this mentality that words can hurt us. Words do have power, but I've never seen words break bones. Words can hurt us, but I've never seen anybody die instantly from a word. Words may hurt us. They may leave an impact on the framework of our soul, but words don't break bone. And when you are being confronted by an enemy or an adversary whose only effect on you is to break bone, to cause you to bleed, to cause your life force to be terminated, then you should respond in kind. You don't sit there and play word games with a bone breaker. And you don't treat someone who is playing a word game as a bone breaker. You all have got to stop letting people break you with words. When I was growing up on this morning mental, my mother used to say to me, they can say whatever they want to you, as long as they don't put their hands on you. Malcolm X said, be courteous and respectful. But when they put their hands on you, send them to the morgue or to the hospital. Sticks and stones. We on sticks and stones this morning. Not to be confused with the late, great Malcolm X when he said that there are some words that we can quote that empower us and then there are some words that only do nothing but to sour the spirit so i'm gonna i'm gonna do something a little different this morning i feel like big bruh needs to have a talk with his kinfolk about sticks and stones and the reason i'm saying that is because i woke up this morning 
and give all praise to the Most High for allowing me to come back one more time because a lot of people didn't wake up this morning. Don't take that for granted. A lot of people did not wake up this morning. Some people woke up this morning and they're not in their right frame of mind. They don't know who they are anymore. They can't remember their name. They can't remember yesterday. And some people woke up this morning only to find out that they're still possessed and occupied by the same spirits and demons that caused them to act like a spirit or a demon against their own people. There's nothing we can do for them. They're lost. Ah, oh, the sun is good to my melanin. But I want to deal with a few things this morning, and I'm going to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with my brothers and sisters. Because every now and then, there used to be a time when you had to go sit with your big brothers. Or you had to sit with your father. You, know, you had to sit down so they could give you the game or give you the wisdom. And sometimes you had to sit with your mother so she could tell you to stop acting a goddamn fool. Y'all remember those days. And if you don't, hold on a second, let's get this right. Thank you. If you don't, then there's a problem. So... Let's deal with some issues this morning, family, that we need to deal with. First, first thing we got to deal with this morning in the, in the area of sticks and stones is that what is going on right now with us as a people is a time for us to be honorable. It is a time for us to command respect. It is a time for us to live out all those words that we always talking about. You know, we, we want this. We want that. We're not taking this. This is our time to show the world that we mean what we say. That doesn't mean a few of us. That means all of us that are capable. But what I'm seeing instead and what we got to deal with, or we can just drop all of this right now. Y'all can just drop everything you're doing right now and cut cut the act, drop the act, you know, uh, drop the act. Stop, cut, cut, cut the shit short. If you're not really going to be about it, if you're not really going to do it, stop it. You're embarrassing us out here. But what I'm seeing, family, is that once again, it's like you keep getting presented with the same opportunity and you keep doing the same damn thing. And then you wonder why certain races look at us as if we're dumb farm animals, because that's what a dumb farm animal does. No matter what you do to it, you can count on it to do the exact same thing. Only today are you beginning to realize that your adversary has had hundreds of years Hundreds of years to perfect not a system, but systems that work on you simultaneously. So if you ever try to get your act together, these systems all go to work on you at the same time. And they, they're they working just fine because you all are acting just like a bunch of dumb farm animals. You're doing exactly what they expect you to do. And the sad part about it is some of us, well, we don't fall into the dumb farm animal category. So when you start doing dumb farm animal stuff, we sit back and look at you like I did not even know that somebody who lives with me could be a dumb farm animal in a situation that we've dealt with countless times before. What is the definition of insanity? Oh, the sun feels so good. Melanin. Definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and actually expecting a different result. And until you do something different, you're not going to get a different result. In our particular case, you all continue to think that the same methods and practices that played out in the 60s is somehow going to get you something new in the 2020s. Y'all remember they had the roaring 20s right now back in the day? Well, this ain't the roaring 20s. This the ignorant 20s. This the coward 20s. This the scared 20s. This the, this the watch niggas act like dumb farm animals 20s. And I'm supposed to be one of your big bros. I'm supposed to be the person that's supposed to be pointing the way. I've been pointing the way y'all don't want to go. I keep pointing the way and I am truly amazed at the number of black people who don't want to go don't want to change, 
still backbiting, still backstabbing, still attacking their own, have no clue or desire to be unified, egotistical, self-centered, frauds, liars, and I hate to say it, especially a lot of you brothers acting like straight bitches. I'm sorry. I got to call it like I see it. I wouldn't take y'all into a spitball fight with me. Sticks and stones. Did those words hurt? They shouldn't. Because unless you know it to be true, you don't respond. Interesting things have come to my attention that let me know just how petty as a people we have become. We've become very petty, y'all. Become very petty. You know, I'm going to use this example and I salute all my brothers behind bars. I salute all my brothers that are prisoners of war of this system. But my brothers behind bars can understand what I'm about to say. If I was the new inmate on the block, just got there. I don't know the rules. I don't know who run the commissary. I don't know who the gangs are. I don't know, you know, who the OGs are. I don't know the history of the prison. I don't know who got shanked last week. I don't know if I want to move from one section of the prison to the other. I just got to get in with the right network of people that be cleaning and stuff. I don't know any of those things. The only thing I know is I'm in here with you and I don't want to be here. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm a cool dude. Normally, I'm visited by the ghetto ducks, but today they got in touch with one of their relatives and he just showed up. Secret squirrel. I haven't seen a squirrel since before the quarantine. And he just ran his ass up here, sat here, looked at me like you, the bruh, and took off. Now, I'm confused because I never knew squirrels, geese and ducks to hang out together. Oh, there's a mixed up family we got going on here. He claimed that he and the family. He said he's identifying as a duck. He says he's identifying as a duck. I'm going to go ahead and let that one ride for a minute. We'll deal with him later. The ghetto ducks got a squirrel cousin. This shit is getting out of control. Anyway, I'm the new kid on the block. Y'all stay with me. And um, grand rising to you. I'm the new kid on the block. Um, you know, I, I know I'm going to fit in somewhere. Ain't nothing punk about Jay, you know, and, and I'm here to do my thing and, get, and keep it moving. Anybody that asks me, why are you here? I would say, brother, I'm just passing through. And with that attitude, I come up with a way to break out of this place so everybody can get free. Follow me, brothers behind bars. I have got the code to the center control room. I have the code to unlock all the gates. I have the code down to shut down the camera system. I have the I have figured out a way for us to get into vehicles and grab weapons and everything we need to do and free everybody in the joint, whether they want to go or not. Now, do you really believe that the bros that's behind bars would sit there and argue, talking about, I ain't following him out of there. I don't know him. Who is he? I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to sit in my cell until somebody that I think should free me should go. I'm not going. Don't you trust that, brother? If you try to leave out of here. Uh... No. Bros behind bars would say we wouldn't give a flying fuck who opened the door. When the door is open, like we've been hoping and been scoping, then we got to say sayonara, see you later, and we out. Black people, y'all can't see that. <laughs> we don't open the gates for us to get out. And I'm tripping off of people that are sitting in their cells talking about, I ain't going nowhere, and none of my people going nowhere. Everybody sit down. But the gate is open. And you got other people that saying, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I, I, I just don't know. I, I, I mean, I like it here. They get three hots in a cot every day. I don't know what's out there. I don't know. But you're in prison. Brothers behind bars know what I'm talking about. Sticks and stones, y'all. Sticks and stones. And when you start to examine why those brothers don't want to leave the prison, we find out it's because of something somebody said. 
Nothing that the brother who broke you out said. Something somebody else said. I warned y'all once before, when people come to you with negative information, you should always question their motives. When people start to criticize somebody that you don't know as if they don't want you to line up with them, you should criticize them. You should examine their motives. When people do certain things that help or hurt us as a whole, always question their motives. I've said that even about me. But I love to use the example of the brothers locked up. I don't want to see my brothers behind uh, bars. I don't want to see my brothers in cages. But I do know that if somebody picked the lock, they wouldn't be arguing about who the hell was going to get out. Oh, no, they wouldn't be doing no shit like that. They'd be like, we out. And then it will be on the news. Somebody did it, and the whole prison got empty. So you can imagine this morning I want to talk to my brothers and sisters like your big bruh to let you know I'm going to need you to get over yourself because if you're going to act like a man, then function like one. If you're going to act like a woman, a grown woman, then function like one. Stop sitting around playing he said, she said, and letting words paralyze you from moving forward. We are not all going to be the same. We are a multi-colored. Uh, we are a multi-thought pattern. We are a multi-factioned people. But our enemy doesn't see us that way. Our enemy sees us as one monolithic group, black people. And I guarantee you, if, they, if a law got passed them all, that they could shoot black people on the street, on sight, they wouldn't stop you to ask you um, what type of black person you was. They wouldn't stop you to ask you if you were straight or gay. They wouldn't stop you to ask you if you was mixed or straight. They wouldn't stop you to ask you, are you descendant of a slave or are you uh, uh, an immigrant? They would just see black people and start busting y'all in y'all ass. And they waiting on that. Y'all honestly don't think that that could happen. You know what? The people in Nazi Germany didn't think that what happened to them could happen to them either, even when it was started happening to them. So y'all keep sitting here thinking that you can sit in your cell and I ain't have nothing to do with them opening the door. I didn't go nowhere. I was just sitting here. But we killing all black people right now. So what, who cares about what you got to say? Sticks and stones, y'all. Sticks and stones this morning. I'm on my morning mental. NFAC is a black militia, not a gun club, period. I've said it, I'm not going to say it again. And militias move in certain ways. A militia is organized. A militia is a military unit. A militia is a group of people all on one accord, on one code following one leadership to accomplish one goal nothing else militias don't demonstrate militias don't protest you see militias carry guns you don't bring out guns unless you're prepared to use them not for show you can imagine how dismayed i was when i heard the story that came out of louisville Kentucky, and a group of people decided to go up to Louisville and protest. Now, far be it from me to rain on another man's parade, but sometimes we got to rein in the bullshit because all you're going to do is create a situation that's going to hurt us in the end. This headline says local revolutionary Black Panther chapter responds to armed protests in Louisville. I was like, okay, well, that's cool. So the group of, so there's a, the, the Black Panther chapter went up there and, and did they thing. The bottom line is, and the problem with the story was, as the story was rolled out by the press, immediately there were calls from the original Black Panthers and the Black Panther chapter in Louisville and a few other folks saying that this was fake and it was a fraud. They had no affiliation with these people that the person that was doing this was doing it for camera time and for props. And they just came in and they walked around with guns. Okay. Now, how does that help our cause? I don't know. Why would somebody do this? Some people just cannot resist the spotlight. 
told you, when it comes to the NFAC, we don't jump in front of cameras. Cameras try to jump in front of us. As a matter of fact, let me help all y'all out since y'all understand what we do. The videos that you all have seen that everybody loves so much of the NFAC were not shot by the media at all. Those are clips from our live streams of our own phones, of our own people. No press goes with us. What press goes to a gunfight? Sticks and stones, y'all. This incident right here highlighted another problem that we have within this community of people who claim to be all of these different groups. Okay, you may have established your own chapter somewhere. You may have established your own group somewhere. You may have built your own militia somewhere. That includes the NFAC. But if we can't all come together to unite against a common enemy in spite of our differences, if we can't put the bullshit aside long enough for us to unite as a cohesive force, then they don't have to worry about us because you cannot fight in a broken fashion. That's why it's called the United States military because they're united. They don't get there and start arguing over who's this, and who's that. And the enemy be sitting back like, man, you look at these clowns and we looking like clowns right now, guys. And I'm going to say it. We're looking like clowns externally and we're looking like clowns internally. As a people, we looking like clowns. You know why we looking like clowns? Because I'm going to say it. And I want to send a big shout out. And, a, and of course, you know, they can reach out to me if they'd like to. But Portia Williams and, um, and the other young lady that got arrested in Louisville yesterday, you know, for going out there to protest for Breonna Taylor. You know, listen, sister, you know, I, I salute you all for putting yourselves on the line. Um, you know, at the end of the day, while I may question, uh, you know, what y'all did as far as the protest itself, because remember, you know, they can only touch you when you break one of their laws and y'all broke a trespassing law. I would th thought it was ironic, Portia, that they arrested you, but they still haven't arrested the three officers for Breonna Taylor. Uh, but just to give you all a sign of hope, today is, today is the deadline. Uh, that I'm supposed to be reached out to by those individuals who are in Louisville for an answer that they owe to the NFAC regarding uh, some type of movement on the Breonna Taylor case. Uh, there is going to be a, a meeting that I'll be glad to report the results of. If the, if the meeting doesn't go the way that I anticipate, I will call for full mobilization of the NFAC. And when we pull into Louisville, I guarantee you we won't be there to protest. And we'll probably give everybody uh, a run for their money. Uh, I would hope that after my discussions with the powers to be, that they see uh, clear heads prevail and we get some handcuffs pulled out for somebody besides the people who are protesting. Uh, so for Ms. Atkins and for Portia and all the folks who went out there, all 87 of you all that got arrested for trespassing at this man's home, um, you know, that's what they're prepared to do. You're a soft target. To the brothers that went out there who put on the fake show, and I'm, you know, and I'm really not getting in the middle of all of that, you know, you have to realize this is not about show. You have to be prepared to return fire. And then again, why are you going to a place where there's a bunch of innocent people, our people, with guns that you are either neither prepared to use in a, some type of a configuration to defend them or protect them, rather than jump in front of the cameras and give interviews? Um, this is what's happened. This is what has infected us as a people. Sticks and stones, y'all. Sticks and stones. I'm out here with my morning mental. It's my morning mental. You see, the enemy doesn't change its tactics. It doesn't. It, it, you do the same thing, they do the same thing. Now, Nick Cannon. You know, I got, I got, to, I got to salute Nick. Nick stood on the square. Nick sat down, said what he said. Nick stood by what he said, you know, um, had a conversation offline with my man, Professor Griff from, from Public Enemy. And once he had done that, you know, of course, that got seen by the powers to be. Uh, they felt that his views were anti-Semitic, which, which, which is something that is not tolerated by the powers to be. And so they, they, they fired him. 
They terminated, CBS Viacom terminated their relationship with him, which, of course, took out several projects that he's responsible for. Uh, Wild and Out, um, The Mass Singer, and a few other great hit shows that y'all like to watch to be programmed. So Nick found out, just like I keep telling you all, as long as you play by their rules, they going to love on you. As long as black people are singing, dancing, and playing sports for them, they love you. But the moment you try to rebuild your communities, rebuild your finances, rebuild your, your, your political power, you are a problem. The moment that you start to think about yourself and not just be the entertainment in the courtroom or the court jester in the, in the palace, then there is a problem. So Nick Cannon found out something that we've all seen happen time and time again to black folks who suddenly want to act like they got some sense. You are cut off. Uh, you know, we, we cannot have that. Remember, you went to work for them. You played their game. You went and, and you acquiesced yourself to the very same system that's been oppressing your brothers. You know, I salute Nick Cannon when he said he was going to do the Dr. Sebi, pick up the Dr. Sebi documentary. You know, and a lot of folks is thinking, Nick Cannon, come on, Nick, Nick, not Nick that's on TV smiling and profiling. Yes, Nick Cannon went out there and did what he had to do. And of course, we thought the backlash would have came then. Sticks and stones, y'all. Sticks and stones. I'm on my morning mental. And so they publicly... Notice they do this publicly. They didn't quietly call him in like they do a lot of these coaches that get caught for sexual harassment and sexual assault on these athletes. They didn't call him in quietly like they do when a teacher says some racist ass shit in her class and they got to pull him in and be like, no, the parents are complaining. They didn't call him in and quietly like, we're going to have to let you go. And here's a nice a, a pension check like they do all these white men that run these companies that, that eat off of you black folks. And then they'd say some racially insensitive shit they didn't do that they publicly this was a public pr lynching to satisfy as i keep telling y'all the core of the machine y'all wonder why mainstream media is not going to cover us they're not going to let us get nowhere near their core hearing the truth they don't want their core to know that we're getting organized but before we can do that we got to deal with the sticks and the stones because for some strange reason, you all are under the impression that words will hurt you. I saw the headline this morning, Nick Cannon dropped by Viacom CBS for spreading anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. What is this? Oh, okay. We're going to take a break right now. I'm going to have to come back on here on, on, on uh, the morning mental. Apparently the sun is being so good to me uh, that my... My phone and my tablet and my other phone are telling me that we overheating, bro. We ain't got no melanin. You got to take us indoors before we melt down, bro. Y'all and this black people thing be killing me. You know damn well that if we can't be out here in the sun, neither could the white people. So how in the hell was they the people from the Ten Commandments? I know what y'all talking about. Join me back here in about five, ten minutes on the morning mental. We're going to finish up. Sticks and stones.